CMS 2140, Performing Impact Testing. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the AMS 2140 to perform impact testing, where one channel will make use of an impact hammer, while up to three channels can use vibration sensors to measure the response. As we review these options, you'll note a visual reference to the CSI 2140. Please be aware that this product has been rebranded as AMS. From the home screen of the AMS 2140, select F7, Advanced Analyze. Select F1, Manual Analyze, then select Set Analyze Mode. From the list of options, select Impact. Using F2, you can specify your frequency range and number of resolution lines. For this example, I will use the default from 0 to 1000 Hz with 800 lines of resolution. Use F3 to specify the number of averages. F4 allows you to specify the window. What you see here is typical for impact tests. F9 set trigger is important because it keeps the data collection in wait mode until it feels an impact. When an impact is felt by the analyzer, it will trigger data collection. Note the 10% pre-trigger. That means that the measurement displayed will include 10% of the measured time leading up to the impact. The trigger level defaults to 22 Newton. Typically, if the data acquisition starts prior to impacting the structure, the analyzer may incorrectly interpret any background vibration more than 22 Newtons as the impact hammer pulse. This would require you to increase this level. The opposite can also be true. If the structure is very rigid and you can impact it with a hammer, you may not be able to create sufficient energy to recognize the pulse. In this case, you would need to reduce the level of Newtons. For most applications, the default value will be fine. If you need to change the Newton level, use F9 set trigger to change the pre-trigger and Newton levels. A critical step to performing this impact test is to verify the input. Use F12 input setup. And for this example, press F1 Select Input, and you see that the four channels have been selected. Using F7 Sensor Setup, you see that inputs A, B, and C are accelerometers, while input D is the impact hammer. Before we proceed with the measurement, return to F6 Plot Setup to specify what you want to see both after the data is collected and during the live data collection. There is a maximum of four plots available to view simultaneously, but there are many options to choose from. If you would like to change the plots you wish to see after data collection, use the Set Plots keys 1 through 4 to access the menu. Here you see several options to choose from. After you've reviewed the plots available after data collection, you can use F6 Plot Format to choose between stacked or quad plots. You can also choose what you will see during data collection. In this setting, we will see the waveform of the impact and three coherence plots. If you would like something different, use F8 set plots to display the list of options. For this example, we will stick with the waveform and three coherence plots. Now we are ready to collect data. As soon as I push enter, data collection starts and the analyzer will tell you when to strike the structure with the impact hammer. Now you see the waveform of the impact and the three coherence plots. The analyzer will ask you to strike the structure three additional times. After the fourth strike, data collection is complete. Now you see the four plots you selected for viewing. You can see that there is a natural frequency in direction A of my sensor. Use F2 next response input to toggle between A, B, and C response input versus D reference input. From here, you can use F6 switch plot type and change the viewable plots. For example, if you want to see the waveform of the response, use F6, then select the plot you wish to change and select waveform from the menu. Now you have the response waveform at the bottom of the screen, and you know it is the active plot by the red box surrounding it. Use F5 to change the active plot. In your active plot, you can install a cursor and see the natural frequencies. All of this data can be stored inside the job mode by using F9 Store Data. This concludes our tutorial.
Please continue watching to select from other recommended tutorials or visit the AMS Reliability Channel for the AMS 2140 playlist. Additional product information can be found at emerson.com slash AMS 2140. Thank you for watching. Thank you.